to kick things off, I'd like to welcome a man who has over 30 years of cross-industry experience, Vice President of Marketing for Twilio, Asia Pacific and Japan, Nicholas Kontopoulos. Please make him welcome. Thanks, mate. Thank you very much. Oh, cooker. Oh, there we go, up there. Awesome. And I was just about to tuck into that food and I, I've been pulled away from it. I'm going to spend a few minutes talking to you about a topic I'm passionate about, but I want to thank the whole team that's put this event on. We're really privileged and proud to be part of this event and uh, looking forward to a great evening with all of you. Um, as, as introduced, um, Nicholas Kontopoulos, half Greek, half Aussie, uh, living currently up in Singapore, so it's great to be back in my home city and uh, enjoying the beautiful views uh, this afternoon. Um, one thing I'm passionate about is food. You can tell my story, I'm carrying a few extra kilos, sadly. I've been enjoying that since we've been back on planes and coming to wonderful events like this. Um, but one thing I do love is ice cream, and I've always been a great fan of uh, cookies and cream ice cream. My father and I really shared a passion for cookies and cream ice cream. It's not that I don't like vanilla, but I just love having those cookies and cream, uh, you know, served up to me. And, and it's one thing that I would normally put my arm around when my kids are trying to get a hold of it. I'm saying, no, this is all mine. But we've been talking a lot about cookies recently in terms of from a marketing perspective. And obviously, there's a, a crumbling of the cookie taking place globally um, and obviously here locally as well. And a lot of this is now forcing us to really rethink as marketers, how do we use the data that we've historically tapped into that provided us lots of re insights in terms of our customers so that we can ultimately target them. And the reality is we do know that there's a real bad taste in people's mouths as a re result of actually what is quite a lot of negative press that we've seen in the media over the recent years. They're seen as really a ruthless data grab or, or being, the data has been used ruthlessly by us marketers in terms of you know, stalking people across the internet. My wife's often complaining about my profession as a result of that. But the reality is, um, you know, the fact is it is driving a lot of uh, issues because for only 40% of customers, and we did this uh, research recently globally where we asked consumers what they think. And ultimately, 40% of consumers said they, they only trust, they only 40% of consumers said that they trust brands with their personal data. That presents such a huge problem for marketers like us in this room. Um, and the reality is we know a lot of this change is being accelerated by the likes of Google and Apple and the other uh, browsers that are now obviously ch changing the, the goalposts on the entire MarTech um, uh, industry in this, in this respect. And a lot of this is being driven by obviously international and local privacy regulation. So there's a lot of change afoot. There's a lot of pressure on all of us to really think about how do we live uh, and operate in a life after these cookies disappear. And the reality is they will uh, move away on us. We know that's happening. And the reality is there won't be any going back, right? Um, you know, we have to adapt to this new reality that we're operating in. But here lies the real conundrum. You know, how will we provide valuable, useful experiences to customers without that data? This is, again, a debate I often had with my wife about the, the benefits of what we were doing with this data. I could tailor that experience, you know, in terms of that she was looking for. And the reality is we know that, um, you know, without these cookies, we ultimately are going to potentially run the risk of delivering a vanilla experience. And one thing I know, and every one of us in this room are consumers, we don't want vanilla experiences. We actually demand more personalized, individualized experiences of the brands that we are engaging with. So, so and, and again, when, I, when we look at the data, when we talk to customers, 71% of buyers feel frustrated when the purchase, purchasing experience is impersonal. So it's a real conundrum here, right? A real challenge for us, you know? And the reality is none of us want to go back to the good old days, right? None, none of us want to go back to where we're doing a spray and pray approach to the way we engage our customers. We really don't want to go back. We know that that's not what customers want. So the reality is, you know, if we think about this world without cookies, it sounds like it's going to be impersonal, but it doesn't have to be. I'm going to challenge us as an industry that we can actually engage our customers in a more personalized, individualized way, in a way that both parties win. And I think that that involves us really looking at how do we engage our customers, not just in a personal way, but in an individualized way and by using data in a much more smarter way. Obviously, you know, as most of us know, we've been personalizing a lot of our experiences with our customers for some time now. But again, there's a high level of demand and expectation we're seeing amongst customers in terms of going a step beyond personalization to really looking at how do we individualize and tailor our experiences that we're delivering. 
And, uh, you know, at Twilio Segment, we're really passionate about this topic. We're really looking at how do we help our clients and our customers do drive a transformational change uh, in, in connecting with their customers in a more meaningful uh, way, in a way that creates a real sense of brand utility with those customers. And ultimately, CDP platforms can ultimately be leveraged in a way that enables you to do that. And I promise I'm not going to do a hard sales pitch here. This is about the only element I'm going to refer to in this respect. But ultimately, I just wanted to sh share with you some insights on how Segment is ultimately delivering solutions that do enable you to connect with your customers in a, in a much richer way and to be able to connect that data in a way that can move beyond personalization to individualization by collecting that data from multiple sources and bringing it together in a way that demonstrates a deeper in understanding of those customers. Now, the big challenge for us to do this, you know, when we think about, OK, great, Nicholas, this is awesome. You know, I understand that this is a problem I need to solve. But one of the big challenges a lot of us face is harnessing or tapping into this idea of dark data and how do we connect, contextualize that dark data in a way that can actually achieve the goals I've sort of started to lay out. But what is dark data? Gartner coined this term and I really loved it when I heard it a few years back. Um, and, and it basically is all of this great data that we have trapped across the enterprise effectively. We've got all of this data we're collecting about customers in the front end and the back ends of our systems within ERP, e-commerce solutions, etc but it's very hard for us to often access that data and surface that data up or surface the insights that data is ultimately holding. So again, what we're trying to do with the CDB solutions is ultimately enable you to actually tap into that data and ultimately see how you can connect with your customers in a more impactful way. But how do you do this with people that don't trust your brands? That's a real problem for us, right? Well, we have to build trust and transparency in, uh, with our customers, right? And we do that by ultimately looking at how do we engage these customers in a way that they see value from that data they're giving. Because here's the kicker, and this is from Accenture, but there's loads of other sources. 83% in this particular study of customers said they willingly will share data with us if it actually demonstrates value. A great use case example for me is about eight years ago, I got in the scales and I weighed in and I looked at my weight and my wife said, yeah, I said, I think I put on a bit too much weight. And she agreed, right? She said, we need to get you down a few kilos. She was a PT personal trainer. And basically she gave me an app, Under Armour at the time. And we started using that to help me build a, a training regime. This is a great example of an app that actually harnessed data that I was willingly sharing with them as a brand and utilizing that uh, data in a way that actually created utility for me. So a really good example of how you can take first party and zero party data, which I'll come on to later, and actually drive a transformational change in the way you engage with your customers, yeah? That's a very simple personal example I'm sharing with you. There's loads of other examples like that out there. Okay, so to build trust with our brands, we must prove the value that we're going to create for them um, if we're going to ask for this information from them. You know, ultimately, you know, customer experience, the bedrock of customer experience is trust. And if people can't trust what we're going to do with our data, how on earth are we going to deliver them an experience that actually is going to be meaningful to them and memorable for them, right? So we need to create unique value. We need to really understand the attention we're capturing from our customers is ultimately very special, right? End of the day, um, we need to show how we're going to return the favor back to them when they share this data with them and not stalk them around the internet in a way that's creepy. But we need to think about how we can actually, like I said, turn it into a utility. And this is a really key focus for us in terms of how we're working with our customers. And I love this quote from Seth in terms of how he does sort of nail this point down about attention, right? That this is something that's quite special and valuable that we need to cherish and actually look at how we can actually take it, you know, you know, honor that in terms of the way we engage with our customers, right? So, and, and the other thing we've seen from our study is over the past 12 months, our customers are getting smarter in how they're using data and understanding the importance of that. In a previous company, was that in the e-commerce space, we, space, we saw this, customers know how to game the system, they understand the value of the data as well. So again, we need to be mem remember, sorry, memorable of that. So this is a sign of the times. I think it's fair to say that the cookies are basically going. We need to adapt to that new reality. We need to understand how do we take advantage of the, the capabilities that are out there to, to really optimize our spends and ultimately move away from this you know, land grab with trying to capture all the data that we could possibly get and ultimately focus on identifying the quality data that sits in our ecosystem and tap into that in a way that can enable us to really um, optimize the way we engage those customers. And we're doing this in a, against an environment where obviously there's a lot of economic headwinds that, we're challenged, that are forcing us to really rethink 
the investments we're making. And we're seeing that. So again, how do I invest in technologies that ultimately going to plug, help me extract more value from my overall technology landscape? And again, this is where I feel that a great CDP solution can actually enable you to get more value from technologies you have. So this is an area that, like I said, that is evolving quickly. We're seeing customers realizing that they're needing to adapt to this new reality. And we're ultimately looking to try to work with you guys in helping you partner in understanding how you can take more, better advantage of the technologies you have out there and use CDP to help extract more um, capabilities for you to, to deliver much richer insights. So, so with that, um, so how can you use customer data that you have to your fullest? Well, I would like to zero in on these two areas. So zero party data and first party data. These are the two areas that we're really laser focused on helping customers look at how they can tap into. And the example I gave to you earlier of the Under Armour example sort of sits in the top part of this uh, um, uh, cartoon, here. cartoon here. Obviously, we're collecting first party data for some time now. Often customers don't really know that they're actually sharing that with you. But again, uh, the real value, I believe, is when you can bring that first party and zero party data together to really deliver that, like I said, a more utility type engagement experience. So what does this mean in a quickly's future? How will brands measure the impact of their marketing spend? Because this is another area a lot of brands are concerned with, with 42% of CMOs and marketers saying that they're really you know, concerned about how they're going to measure the value of uh, their investments. Well, the great thing is we're seeing customers that really focus on zero and first party data actually see really great value. This company, Veronica Beard, fantastic success story out of New York fashion label. I think they're around about $200 million turnover company, has seen really great benefits in really doubling down and understanding how to extract you know, and utilize that first and zero party data in a way that can enable them to connect with their customers in a more richer experience. Locally, this is a great brand story here as well, where we've got another low cost um, mobile service provider in Australia is using a textbook example of how they're improving data governance locally to really drive a better, richer customer experience. So again, they're using a unified view of the customer to really automate a better end-to-end -end customer experience and ultimately achieving some really great uh, returns on those investments. So what I'm going to ask that you think is breaking your enterprise addiction to cookies means actually, I think, a lot of opportunity. That ultimately, we have an opportunity to take more control by focusing on the data that we do collect that the customers willingly share with us, creating an environment where we actually encourage them to share data with us because there is trust in our brands and ultimately using that in a way that will ultimately allow us to actually you know, move away from the dependencies on third-party data. So with this, in, you know, we have a great opportunity now, as I said, to start getting a jump on our competitors that don't understand this uh, opportunity that they may be being too slow in seeing what opportunity sits in front of them and ultimately using this as a way to actually engage consumers that will be more willingly share um, hopefully more of their wallet spend with us if we can deliver that more personalized or individualized experience. Ultimately to do this we need to create an environment in our businesses that encourages our teams to be able to experiment. This is something for me personally as a marketer and CMO uh, in, in Twilio, I'm trying to encourage my teams to fail early, fail often, but always fail forward, utilizing the capabilities of the technologies we have to actually do that test, learn and adapt, create that test, learn, adapt mindset in their businesses. You know, in conclusion, the great cookie conundrum has brought us to a fork in the road. Ultimately, I will argue that we, have, we must choose whether we, to, we settle for plain vanilla or strive to do something more than just having a vanilla experience, yeah? So the key to success here for me is in a cookie list world, we need to focus on ultimately harnessing your power of your zero and, and first party data, utilize that to de better de deliver individualized experiences that ultimately, you know, separate you f uh, your, your, yourselves from your competitors in that respect. So with that, I want to give you the opportunity to go back to your meals. I really appreciate you guys giving me your attention on a Friday evening, just before <laughs> as we sit down for a meal. And again, I look forward to you enjoying a wonderful evening tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nicholas.